Hi everyone. I am um, Margaret and today I will be doing a special Mother's Day edition of T101 class. And uh, I will give you a little time to get ready. Uh, some of you have purchased these uh, tea tasting kits. So I assume you're going to be steeping tea along with me. Uh, those we this special Mother's Day tea tasting kit has six teas, six types of tea, and also has a very special blooming tea in it, as well as instructions, steeping instructions. So if you miss this live session, no worries. You can still watch it later. It's going to be recorded on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, also, you may want to watch our regular T1, T101 class, which is very similar without those special Mother's Day accents. And um, happy Mother's Day <laughs> to all moms, grandmas, people who care uh, for children and um, even if they're grown-ups, uh, pet moms, cat moms, dog moms, you name it. Happy Mother's Day to all moms today. Uh, this is a little more festive my table today because I want to make it a little more special and oh I forgot the balloon can you bring me a balloon <laughs> we have a special balloon so to make it even more festive um, I hope that everybody's logged on if you have trouble or if there's something wrong with the uh, video uh, let us know. You can call us too here. It's, um, I should have a number written, but you can uh, look it up. Uh, it's 412-422-1606. I'm getting a balloon. Balloon! Is this going to cover me? Probably. Here we go. Can we see that? Can you guys see the balloon? Is it too high, too low? Can it go even higher? Oh, because we have... Yeah, we, we are still in the process of figuring out what's wrong with my phone or Facebook. For some reason, it won't let us record sideways. Uh, if you guys have any ideas, on how to help me with this, please email me to 100teacups at gmail.com. Uh, I need my gadget here so I can see you guys um, and see who's on. Also, please, uh, if you have any questions or comments, just please throw them in the comment box. Um, and uh, there will be also a time at the end of the session for questions and answers. This, uh, for now, we're doing live tea classes, but hopefully we will resume the actual classes in person here in the store. Um, as soon as we're clear of COVID, hopefully it will happen soon. For now, it just you can just see me and hear me, and if you would like to interact, you can just come to the store because we're open. In fact, we're going to be open open tomorrow on Sunday, uh, Mother's Day, May 8th, uh, because it's Mother's Day. Um, we'll be here from 11 to 5. What do I have here? <laughs> well, I thought I will give you some ideas on a little more festive tea taking. Uh, this is a very simple setup, but look how nice, how elegant, and it takes very little time to prepare a tray like this. Um, I have made the, um, uh, of course, classic cucumber sandwiches, mini sandwiches, but I added a radish because radish adds a beautiful red color. And don't forget about that dill, fresh dill there's nothing like fresh dill the smell the taste super beautiful just to give you an idea how to make these cucumber sandwiches all you need is um, i usually use 
Now whipped cream cheese, it could be just regular cream cheese. And um, nice to see you. Hello, Alice. Hello, Judy. Hello, Heidi. And everyone else. And um, everyone else on Instagram. Hello, hello. I'm trying to get situated here. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, there is a little stand, like a little wooden stand. Okay, how do we make these um, cucumber sandwiches? All you need is a cream cheese or whipped cream cheese, and uh, you can add a ranch dip um, seasoning mix, ranch dip seasoning mix to add some taste. There are other recipes. You can blend your cheese with other ingredients, um, and uh, but this is this is like the easiest. Uh, stuff you know <laughs> but if you like to elaborate and spend hours on preparing your high tea which really shouldn't be called high tea I'll get to this in a second a few minutes um, so sandwiches are covered now I today I just picked some cupcakes because they look really spectacular and we have jammy dodgers jammy dodgers uh, British little British cookies with uh, jam jelly inside. The more classic setup for high tea would be scones. Uh, so it would be um, mini sandwiches, scones, and some um, petite fours little dessert. However, it's very easy to make scones. Uh, we sell Irish scum mix, all you have to do is just add water, mix it up, cut the whatever shape um, scones you like and bake. And then we also carry a clotted cream. Clotted cream is a, sort of like a cross between butter and cream. Um, and it's only the pure original clotted cream is only made in England from special milk from special cows. And then you can add preserve. Usually it would be strawberry, raspberry, or blackcurrant preserve. And uh, I just watched the video. I don't know if you guys saw it. Uh, I posted it a few days ago on Facebook uh, that supposedly we're supposed to put uh, preserve or jam first on the scone and then slap a little bit of that um, um, clotted cream because then it looks pretty it's not smooshed you can also use uh, lemon curd to uh, place some scones it's all delicious and it's very elegant it's all about presentation don't be afraid to dress up a little bit or a lot um, and that's why i have my attire today to make it a little more festive today hi jessica uh, okay so this was like a little introduction and just kind of to put you guys in the mood for Mother's Day. Um, hopefully someone will get a hint and maybe organize and set up this uh, IT for you. Just make them watch this video. Okay, there goes cream cheese. I have a giveaway today. Um, we have some Queen Mother tea to give away, and all you have to do is, can I have some blank papers? I'm just going to want to write something. Um, actually, I just need a pen. Hello? <laughs> yes. Look what I have. I have a beautiful teapot. Fancy teacup with English strainer, because I, de I decided to present first tea in a British way. So just to go along with this uh, high tea or afternoon, it's supposed to be afternoon. So um, if you would like me to 
send you a sample. Actually, it's a pretty nice sample. I think there's one ounce, so it's going to make five cups, five mugs of tea, of this Queen Mother tea. All you have to do, just put in the comments, tea please, tea please. And uh, then, uh, please email your address to me or email me that you want to pick it up. And that's all. Um, so I'm giving away Queen Tea. This is our special blend uh, designed, developed for Mother's Day 2022. Um, this is black tea with apple pieces, linden and mallow petals, corn flowers, rose petals. And it has um, kind of like a, um, apple and cherry, a little bit of cherry flavor. Uh, it's simply beautiful. So just uh, type tea please in comments and you will be rewarded with one of these teas. Okay? That's the special today. We also have another blend uh, for um, Mother's Day. It's called Mother's Love. Um, it's slightly different than the one we had last year. It's the same name. Um, this one has apple pieces, lemongrass, rose hips, lavender, orange, blue cornflowers, uh, lemon um, flavor, and rose petals. And uh, I think I'm going to, well, I would like to make some, but. I have to move on to more serious teas. Um, Olivia, who uh, Olivia, who uh, works here, and one other girl said they said, "Oh my gosh, this tea is so good." <laughs> of course, um, so we're probably gonna keep this tea in stock now because uh, they just absolutely love it. Uh, but today I'm giving away also very very good tea. This is just a bigger package, just to show you the name. It's called Queen Mother. And I believe we're going to also promote this tea for a Queen's Jubilee. How about that? So it's going to be available in the store. Both of these teas are probably going to be available until end of May. Here's your prizes. Something is wrong here. Okay, so I'll, I'll be reminding every now and then about my giveaway today, so no worries. Let's get organized. Tea, please. Just say tea, please, and you will be rewarded with this deal. Uh, continuing with the Mother's Day theme today, um, everyone who received those uh, Mother's Day virtual ta class tea tasting kits also has a special blooming tea. And I have one here um, to present. Um, this is a wonderful green tea and they have, depending on the type of tea, they have different uh, uh, flowers in them and they usually have like a slight jasmine or rose flavor. Um, all you have to do is throw one of these bowls. Let's see if I can find one. Uh, one of these little bowls. Oops. In in the hot water. And they, in about one minute, they open up and they reveal not only brew tea, or just these are the leaves wrapped on the outside, and uh, they reveal a beautiful flower that's hidden inside originally. So this is a actually really easy way of making tea because you don't even need infuser to do that. Okay. Oh, about this uh, giveaway. Please, um, we only honor requests during the live tea class, live tea class. So once the live tea class is over, the giveaway will end. So 
make sure you watch live. Uh, let's talk about this motherhood. I, my motherhood journey started on September 25th, 1985, uh, with the birth of my first child, Natalia. I was at that time happened to live in Italy. So my first child was born in Italy. And as some of you know, most of you probably know, uh, we are, um, I was born in Poland. I'm from Poland, but none of my three children was born in Poland. My uh, middle child, Nina, uh, was born in Canada. And then my son, Adam, was born in United States. So uh, each child from different country, but the same mother. Jessica is asking, do you do online orders for people not local? Of course, of course, Jessica. We have online shop, uh, bluemonkeytea.com, and our shipping is really reasonable. We only charge $5.99 flat rate anywhere in U.S. So if you just go to bluemonkeytea.com, uh, you will see our online shop with uh, enormous amounts of teas and tea gadgets. I wonder if um, just, uh, well, it's too much. I was going to ask you guys about your first word. When did this happen? If you want to share with others, let us know. Or uh, maybe um, maybe you had a, maybe your first time you adopted a puppy. That will be interesting too. Or a cat. <laughs> Cats are awesome. Uh, why am I holding this? Because I would like to do uh, Mother's Day quotes. So here we go. Mothers are like glue. Even when you can't see them, they are still holding family together. Susan Gale, author of books on parenting. A mother understands what a child does not say. Jewish proverb. Mothers hold their children's hands for a short while, but their hearts forever, unknown. There's no way to be a perfect mother and a million ways to be a good one. Jill Churchill, author, not related to, maybe, maybe related to famous church. I don't think so. A mother is a person who, seeing there are only four pieces of pie for five people, promptly announces she never did care for a pie. Uh, Teneva Jordan. Um, she wasn't a writer. She just has, she just had those famous sayings, I guess. Next, when your mother asks, do you want a piece of advice? It's a mere formality. It doesn't matter if you answer yes or no. You're going to get it anyway. Irma, Irma Bombeck. And the last one, the funny one, mom, I love you, even though I'll never accept your friend request. Unknown. Okay, guys. Awesome. You guys are sharing. Um, Christina, yeah. Uh, and uh, Alice said her child was born in Honolulu. And um, Judy, Washington State. Oh my goodness, Jessica says that her uh, oldest was born during a whiteout blizzard in January 2010 <laughs> without obstetrician because she was stuck in the ditch. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, let's get serious. Um, I hope I created that Mother's Day vibe here. I hope you guys are enjoying. The weather's looking better. After all that rain we had, and it's supposed to be pretty nice tomorrow. So, so once again, if you would like me to send you, or if you would like to pick up a sample of Mother's Day, I'm sorry, Mother's, rewind, Moth, uh, Queen Mother Tea, uh, just say in comments, type tea please, and it's only valid, this offer is only valid during um live presentation and then please email me your address or if you want to pick it up just email pick up 
Welcome, Henry. <laughs> okay, Mitchell is reminding me about my grandchildren. Yes, I'm a grandma. I have one that's already born. His name is Locke. Uh, and he's four months old. Hi, Locke. This is Grandma. And the other one is on its way, on his way. And it's Henry. And he will be here in July. Okay. Hi, Bryson. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. Okay. And then there's people on Instagram. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining. So I'm going to move this... Uh, yummy tray with mini sandwiches and some other goodies on the side i'm gonna make this on the side and we're going to get busy with class p101 uh, i am going to start um brewing one tea in a british way british way and i'm going to pick for that not a british tea it's going to be Pittsburgh breakfast. Pittsburgh breakfast is our blend that was designed for, um, I lost my papers. It was blended here in our shop and it's really good. And it's actually been taken to England for gifts. Uh, and uh, we're going to apply this rule. Um, black tea, uh, first off, the amount of tea should be one teaspoon per cup. One teaspoon per cup. I have a tea measure here, but it's the same as a teaspoon. Uh, cup means this, which is about maybe five, seven ounces. So if you make a teacup, use one teaspoon of dry tea leaves. Now, I will be making a pot of tea, which holds six cups. So I will be using six of these. And I have my Pittsburgh breakfast right here. Uh, in England, and actually anywhere, it's a really great idea to preheat your tea, but I won't be doing it here. but. If you uh, preheat your teapot, it will maintain uh, proper temperature and will keep your tea warm. And it will allow tea to brew, brew well because it will maintain that hot temperature. Black tea, 212, 100 Celsius, and the steeping time is four minutes. So let's make some tea. I'm doing heaping spoons. This is Pittsburgh breakfast, black tea. It's a blend of various teas from Ceylon, which is Sri Lanka now, um, China, and one secret ingredient, which I'm not going to share. <laughs> Unless you pay me a lot. Uh, hot water. It's really good to have a timer or a lot of you can a lot of people use phone timers just don't keep them close to your uh, tea because you might get spoilage spillage <laughs> and spoilage. Uh, this is a very nice method of making tea but only if you already have few people um, that you are sharing your tea with because if you don't pour it out after four minutes, it's going to be oversteeping. And this is called English strainer. It's not called infuser. This is not deep enough to actually steep tea in it. This just serves to strain the tea to hold the leaves. 
So why don't you guys come here and join me because I need more people to for this teapot. Would you like some tea? <laughs> I need a cup. I think I'm going to move this. Ah, let's leave it here. Um, we still have a few minutes, so I'm going to start talking about camellias and nancies. This is what I'm focusing on today. Uh, tea plant. This is the... Um, botanical name, Camellia sinensis. Uh, Camellia sinensis is a evergreen bush that can also grow into a tree, but it takes a long time. Usually it doesn't happen because the bushes are trimmed at the waist level for easy leaf picking. And the only uh, leaves that are usually used for um, harvesting are two top leaves and a bud. All the leaves below are too woodsy. They, they're not really used for um, harvesting and making beverage. Uh, the um, the tea, tea was actually discovered a very long time ago, um, about 2700 BC. So we're talking like about 5,000 years ago by Emperor Shenang, supposedly, who was an avid botanist, and once he found leaves in a cup of hot water near him while he was resting in his garden, uh, meditating or whatever, he was, he tried it, he liked it, he sent servants for more. And uh, this, uh, it, then tea was mostly now only known in China for many, many centuries until about the uh, beginning of the ninth century where it, when it traveled to Japan. It was brought to Japan by monks. Monks, uh, monks really cherished tea because not only was it delicious, but also it kept them awake during long prayers. Because all tea that comes from Camellia sinensis has caffeine. So it doesn't matter whether it's black, green, oolong, white, they have very similar caffeine content, despite of the some kind of common belief. Uh, and it's about one third of caffeine of coffee. My first dog was adopted on Father's Day 2001. Uh, this, uh, just a reminder, I have these Queen Mother tea little packets here. Uh, and these are our giveaway today. All you have to do is um, write tea please in comments and then email your address to this email address, my email address, or you could write pick up if you want to pick it up. And this is only valid during the live presentation, so probably until about 7.30 today. Um, and uh, please share, click that little button on the bottom, <laughs> and uh, this will allow more people to see the program and maybe get this wonderful tea as well. Here we go. Lovely, and we're going to share with someone else here. We have like a little more oriental looking mug. Come on. It's not working, but it's okay. There's some kind of forces here. I'm not sure what it is. But there was a special uh, strainer for this mug. Right? Can you show us? Because this, this is our new set. Be a lot of tea spilled here at the end of the show. Here we go. Do you spill tea when you make tea? <clears throat> so this is what comes um, with this um, nice dragon mug. Um, it has ceramic infuser and the lid. Um, but I think we're done here. That sound. Can you hear it? It's still coming. Yeah. 
English strainer for English tea. Here we go. Thank you. If for any reason someone couldn't log on to watch this program, no worries. I just want to mention again, this is recorded and it's being recorded so you can watch it later at any time on Facebook or Instagram. Um, and we are probably going to edit it and um, hopefully it will be available soon on YouTube channel along with some other educational, tea educational videos. Flowers. Do you know what this is? Anybody? What's the proper name of this hat? Hi, Evelyn. <laughs> this is the tea cozy, and it serves the purpose of keeping your tea nice and cozy, hot. We have few. We still we always carry a few. We always have them here too. So if you want to keep your tea nice and hot and pretty, that's what it is. So I'm going to leave this tea for now. Maybe before I do that, I would like to show you uh, the proper way of drinking tea from a cup is you never leave the saucer on the table. You pick them both up and you drink like this. You can add sugar, of course, milk, very British. I don't drink tea with milk. It's my Polish upbringing. Uh, we always had black tea just with sugar and lemon, but um, I know it goes really well with milk, so go for it. <clears throat> go for it. So we've got the first tea brewed, black tea, hot water, four minutes, hot water in four minutes. Just move this guy here. Uh, so history of tea doesn't end in um, Japan, of course. I told you that first it was discovered in China, and then a uh, very, very long time ago, almost 5,000 years ago, and in the beginning of the 9th century, it traveled to Japan. It was brought to Japan by monks. Monks also started cultivating tea. And as you probably know, eventually, uh, Japanese also, um, well, the, the concept of matcha powder tea actually originated in China, but it was really appreciated in Japan, and it became a part of the Japanese tea ceremony. I'm holding matcha. Matcha is a powder tea. It's a ground-up tea leaf. Uh, the tea arrived to Europe in the uh, mid-16th century, and it was brought to Europe by Portuguese, and uh, then it spread out throughout the Europe. Dutch and British were very heavily involved in tea trade. And uh, there were three ladies in England who contributed to um, tea drinking. Uh, that was Catarina de Bogranza, um, Portuguese, Portuguese princess who married Charles II, who brought tea chests with her and made tea drinking very customary and popular in the royal court. Um, Anna Russell, who invented so-called afternoon tea, which we like to call high tea. Um, Queen Anne, who switched from beer to tea for breakfast. I'm not kidding you. That really happened. Uh, no ale, just tea. And then we have tea in America uh, that was brought here probably with the um, first uh, pilgrims, maybe not first, but uh, eventually uh, popularity of tea in the U.S. in America dropped uh, as of uh, 1773 because um, of the protest um, against taxation and also dumping these amounts of expensive tea um, to Americans by British. And that, there's a lot more to this story. I'm not going to go into detail. I have a separate class about history of tea and teapots. So 
please, if you're interested, just refer to the uh, class, okay? Paula, <laughs> thank you, Evelyn. Uh, Paula says, is honey in tea popular anywhere? Yes, it's popular here. It's amazing, um, especially that we sell local honey from um, Bedillion, which is in Hickory, PA. And local honey is good for you because it um, helps to boost immunity. The, there's also tea. It has different names, but it's become more popular. And I saw uh, some Food Network series, um, and they were actually blending tea with honey and making, I think they call it a sticky tea or sticky chai, And uh, but I'm not going to get into this. But honey and tea go really well together. Of course, whiskey. <laughs> yes, thank you. Especially Winston Churchill, who loved Lapsang Suchong smoky tea. And he added uh, scotch to it. Not whiskey, but scotch. There is some um, um, invention of iced tea um, also happened here in the US. Um, apparently during um, St. Louis Fair in 1904, it was really hot. And Richard Bl Blinden, who was serving hot tea, didn't have much luck with that because people People just it was just too hot people were not interested so he developed a way of cooling that tea by attaching pipes to containers with tea and letting tea drain through these pipes and by the way they were lead pipes from some vendor next to him but he uh, is considered a father of iced tea uh, okay I think that's enough history <laughs> Once again, if anybody's interested, if you just type words uh, T, please, in comments, uh, and then contact me uh, through email, 100teacups at gmail.com. If you just, uh, it just has to happen during the live show, I will be sending this Queen Mother Tea to you, because everybody deserves to have Queen Mother's Tea. Uh, ah, let's have some tea. Hold the saucer. I'm not going to do that. Mm, it's lovely. The, uh, so tea plant uh, can grow in uh, tropical and subtropical climate. Uh, therefore, most of the tea is grown in countries like China, uh, India, Sri Lanka, Japan, um, Africa, countries like Kenya, Malawi. Uh, there is also tea grown in uh, Hawaii and um, even here in continental US, which I actually had a special class about that too. So if you're interested, watch that one. Uh, tea is, uh, looks almost, there's some sub cultivars uh, but generally it's one species it looks very much almost the same regardless of where it grows and <clears throat> under what uh, climatic cir circumstances conditions uh, the reason why teas look different uh, here and why we have green black oolong uh, white um, it, it's uh, due to the um, special processing of the tea leaves after harvesting uh, green tea is made by applying heat to leaves right after harvesting and that could be in the form of steaming or pan firing like in big walks sort of like um, uh, stir fry and um, heat stops enzymatic changes and prevents tea from aging and turning dark uh, and therefore it tastes fresh it tastes like um, a freshly picked uh, leaf. White tea um, is processed um, very gently. Uh, there's no, uh, they just let the leaves wither just a little bit um, so they uh, lose a little bit of moisture first and then they are further uh, dried on 
spread out on bamboo, usually bamboo racks. And a lot of times it's, it's done indoors, so there's no exposure to like, um, uh, you know, heat or moisture or too much sun. Uh, so white tea is usually made only with one leaf and top bud, bud or just buds, like for example, silver needle. The tea that we're going to taste today is called Pai Mutan. And if you have received your tea tasting kits, you can see that there's a lot of tips, those white buds that have um, little hairs on them. And that they are very sweet. <laughs> this uh, black tea is um, oxidized. So after harvesting, uh, black tea uh, will undergo a uh, few hours of or like several hours of withering, and then um, after that, um, it's going to it's uh, it will undergo mechanical processing, which will involve shaking out the leaves, turning, um, maybe manual crushing a little bit. Uh, by doing this, um, the oxidation process is accelerated, and tea turns dark, and um, it will the um, this process will um, uh, uh, sorry. this process um, helps to get all these uh, the flavor out of the black tea um, it um, and as you all know uh, the black tea will taste strong and it will have a little bit of um, sort of like astringency but it all depends to what type and what grade of tea we're using so green tea is unoxidized completely because heat stops enzymatic changes. Black tea, 100% oxidized. White tea is just very tiny little bit oxidized, almost nothing. And then we get into this very interesting tea, oolong. So this... Um, and I will be brewing these teas in a little bit, so I will talk about each one of them in a little more detail. Uh, just to let you know that oolong tea is somewhere between green and black in terms of degree of oxidation. Um, so by alternating oxidation and stopping oxidation, they develop tea that is partially oxidized, like about, it could be anywhere from 20 to 80%. And therefore, oolongs are quite different from each other. They could be really green, like this milk oolong, uh, Kwanja milk oolong, which is one of our best teas ever. <laughs> it has a very nice, creamy aroma, um, smooth, velvety flavor. And it could be really dark, almost looking like black tea. Hi, Laura. Derby day too. <laughs> I need a hat. So, um, so this is kind of like quick review of what tea is. A real true tea it comes from Camellia sinensis. It, it is a Camellia sinensis plant, and the way it looks and tastes after processing only depends on uh, you know what kind of process it undergoes after harvesting. Uh, if you want to store your tea properly. The best way is to store it in, uh, uh, you know, airtight container. And it's uh, depending on the size of the tea. Like if you have four ounces, for example, which is average amount. Most people buy four ounces of tea, which will yield about 20, 25 mugs of tea. Um, this is the four ounce containers. And if it is uh, smaller... I don't have it here, but keep it away from odor and moisture and um, in a dark place or in an opaque container. Tea will store really well. Um, it all depends how many times you open and, you know, re reach for that tea. But um, it actually doesn't really go bad until, unless it gets moldy due to the, um, you know, humidity factor. Um, Keeping tea in the fridge is not recommended because um, placing it in the fridge and taking it out creates a condensation, which is moisture. So 
try not to keep your tea in the refrigerator. This is a um, tin that holds two ounces. Two ounces makes about 10, 12 mugs of tea. Uh, this, um, how do we make tea? Well, I'm going to get to this in a minute. Um, I told you about history of tea, tea plant, um, storing tea, um, health benefits. I think we all know that true tea has a lot of antioxidants, and this is just a great benefit. Um, there's they say there's no other plant that has this amount of antioxidants as tea, especially green tea. Uh, white tea also has a lot of an antioxidants, uh, but uh, usually uh, it's a little more expensive and people tend not to use enough to get themselves enough um, antioxidants and other goodies. Tea is also considered antibacterial. It's great for your dental health. Uh, it's supposed to boost immune um, response, uh, and uh, uh, it's very uh, it's um, good for your cardiovascular uh, system. Um, they say people who drink uh, at least three cups of tea per day, uh, that's enough, <laughs> three of these, uh, they're less likely to have uh, cardiovascular incidents like strokes or heart attacks. But this is uh, still an ongoing research, um, so there, um, just you know, don't just keep keep in mind. Remember, antioxidants. Antioxidants are great. Um, just um, and also, if you drink tea, you're probably going to, going to drink less soda or coffee. <laughs> so that will be a health benefit switching to tea. Okay. Um, I am going to start brewing tea. Let me get my notes here. Make sure I don't forget something important to tell you. Um, some people will ask, like, what is chamomile? Or, like, what is peppermint? Is that a tea? No, no. Officially, tea is only Camellia sinensis plant and uh, beverage made of. But we call tea like we call tissue Kleenex. We, we say chamomile tea or chai tea. <laughs> chai tea actually is made with real tea plus spices, but chai tea is a misnomer because chai actually already means tea in many different languages. So by saying chai tea, you basically say tea tea. But that's fine. Uh, so you can also make infusion uh, from many other plants and they also have their benefits. Uh, as I mentioned, chamomile, um, peppermint blend of fruits, like one in your kit and one I'm going to steep today called Las Mango in Paris, which is basically made with fruits, or rooibos. Rooibos is another very interesting um, herb. Uh, we can call tea in uh, quotation marks. And this is how today we're going to, I'm going to brew uh, caramel rooibos. So it's a rooibos with um, additional caramel flavor. And that's how we spell it, R-O-O-I-B-O-S. And we pronounce it Roy Boss, like Roy and his boss. Or, or Roy, who is a boss? <laughs> Roy Boss. So how do we make good cup of tea? How do we make good cup of tea? Uh, first, good tea, uh, loose leaf tea, always better than tea bags. It's unprocessed, it's a fuller leaf, you get a lot more benefits and usually pay less too. Uh, good quality water. Uh, water should be, usually spring water is the best, but tap water is fine as long as it's safe and it doesn't smell funny or it doesn't have too much chlorine in it. Uh, don't use distilled water so, because distilled water doesn't have any minerals, so it actually makes tea taste flat. Uh, boil on, only bring water to boil. Do not overboil because water will lose oxygen and also will make 
your tea tastes flat. So try to just use enough water uh, for the amount of tea that you are anticipating to make. And uh, don't keep it in a kettle and keep boiling over and over again. Um, electric kettles, um, they, I don't have a base here, but of course they're very convenient. I encourage every one of you, if you're serious about drinking tea, please get yourself an electric kettle. Uh, we don't have them at the moment. I am still looking for a new supplier, but these are widely available in um, you know stores, um, department stores, or Amazon. I mean, it's really, really good to have electric kettle, and you can also get yourself a kettle with um, temperature setting depend for different types of tea. Uh, this is a great gift. So if you're thinking about buying a gift for someone, like for a wedding, um, buy them electric kettle. Um, you can also make ramen soup if you don't want to make tea. And um, or if you maybe want to put it on your wish list and have, if you have birthday coming up or Mother's Day, Father's Day, something like that, you can um, probably give your family friends a hint that you would like to have electric kettle. Uh, when we I already told you, but I'm going to uh, tell you again. The average amount of tea per cup is one teaspoon. But some teas are bulkier, like for example, this white tea. Uh, this is probably half of the weight of the Lucky Dragon Hyson that's next to it. So you have to keep that in mind uh, that in order to make a proper strength tea and get all the health benefits, you might have to weigh that tea. And uh, the average amount is two grams, two grams. We do sell scales, gram scales, um, but um, you can just, you know, figure it out approximately, maybe instead of uh, one teaspoon, you might want to use two. Don't use too little. Too much tea is okay. Uh, this, uh, so one teaspoon per teacup or two teaspoons per mug. Mug is, of course, bigger. It's usually about 12 to 14 ounces, so two of these. Uh, use proper temperature water and proper steeping time. And trust me, your tea will be much better. And I already uh, steeped black tea today right here in a British way. Let's have a sip. Lovely. And now let's make some green tea. And I will be doing, I will be steeping <clears throat> Lucky Dragon Hyson, which is a really, really nice green tea from China. And it is uh, very mellow. It um, has much subtle, more subtle, um, sweeter taste than um, some other green tea. So I will be steeping Lucky Dragon Hyson tea today. And the steeping for green tea is as follows. Little cooler temperature, only about 180 degrees and only two minutes. Please remember this. If you steep green tea, Longer than two minutes, trust me, that tea is not going to taste good. So green tea, only two minutes. I'm going to use one of my favorite gadgets. It's a brewing mag. It's called brewing mag tea infuser basket. Uh, it fits very nicely all different sizes of mugs or teapots, and I'm going to measure. Two teaspoons of Lucky Dragon Hyson tea. And right now, the temperature is, I can't tell you exactly how much, um, what is the temperature, but I'm pretty sure it's, uh, actually I can, I can measure it, but um, it's very close to 180 now. You can use therm any thermometer, any kitchen thermometer to check the temperature of your beverage. 
Uh, this has a nice little lid that also serves as a tray after that you're done sticking. <sighs> Wendy, thank you. Thank you, Wendy, for your kind words. Uh, so we're going to steep. This is our green tea. Two minutes. And uh, the next tea, which I'm going to start now too, I'm going to make a white tea, Pai Mu Tan, uh, which otherwise, AKA white peony. That's what that tea is uh, called. And I'm going to get my big jar here. So this is Pai Mu Tan, white tea. And as you see, jars are almost empty. <laughs> We were very busy today, lots of sales. Thank you everyone who came and bought something. And uh, white tea, we steep water about 190 degrees, so a little hotter than for um, green tea, and for three minutes. The same for oolong. We're going to steep oolong the same way. I love glass mugs, but I'm also doing this for you guys so you can see the color of these teas. And this will be, I'm going to have to use a little more I'm trying to find another infuser, but because this tea is so bulky, I'm going to use another one of these uh, because I will be measuring a little more than two teaspoons. I'm actually going to measure three heaping teaspoons of white tea. White tea is very delicate, it's very light in taste, and it really takes a while to get used to it and to actually appreciate, but uh, trust me, once you start and um, you start detecting those notes, uh, you will love it. it because it's so delicate. It's almost sweet, especially the silver needle. Green tea, you're done. Let's take you out. Now it, it, it's a little lower temperature, but that was to be expected. And here we go. I'm going to leave it right here. So this is our green tea, Lucky Dragon High Sun. I'm not tasting this tea right away because my <clears throat> favorite temperature to taste teas is about 140 degrees. Um, if tea is too hot, you, you cannot really perceive the notes well. You just basically burn yourself. <laughs> so give a tea a couple minutes to rest and cool down, but not too much because once it goes below that 140, 120, it, it, the taste changes uh, dramatically. Um, unless you like iced tea, which is a totally different story. Okay, so I have another kettle here, which has um, 190 degrees. Hope you guys are brewing your own teas too. <laughs> I know a lot of you got those uh, tea tasting kits. Thank you for purchasing them. Three minutes. And let's make one last true tea, which is Huanjia Milk Oolong. Milk Oolong, as the name indicates, has a wonderful milky, creamy aroma and taste. And it also has, um, actually I have a sign here, has uh, kind of like a very fuzzy kind of velvety mouthfeel. That's why I love it. This uh, Wanja Milk Oolong green tea and white tea, they can be re-steeped. After first steep, save the leaves in your infuser and you can steep it later uh, again and have um, another cup of fun. Come on, Oolong. Milk Oolong. 
So as I mentioned before, oolong is somewhere between uh, green and black tea in terms of degree of oxidation. And it could be lighter oxidized, like maybe 20% oxidized and uh, tends to uh, remind of um, green tea, um, but never the same. It's never the same as green tea. Or it could be highly oxidized, like 60, 70, maybe even 80%. And then uh, it changes, the color is dark, and it kind of leans towards the taste of the black tea, but never exactly the same as black tea. So let's make milk oolong. And for that, I'm going to use classic tea bowl, but I like to use bigger tea bowls because the more room leaves have to open up, the better the steep, the better the brew, and you get more out of it. Of course, I could use these cute little infusers because there's a lot of them, dogs, owls, um, cats, ducks, ducks. And one of the, where is it? <laughs> this is the one that we sell a lot. It's a sloth. Isn't that cute? It's a lot of fun with tea. Tea is not just a drink. You can brew and serve tea in various different uh, rituals. Um, for example, gong fu, which is a special Chinese tea ceremony. I love to smell. This is one of my favorite parts of tea steeping. <sighs> Smelling wet leaves after steeping. Have you ever done that? Uh, so, the, where was I? No, go long. Uh, yeah, tea is not just a drink. Tea is a ritual. It's a culture. It's a uh, unifying experience. Um, you can learn geography, history, even language um, just by learning about tea and tea customs, for example. And I keep telling people that uh, if you know how to take tea with people in a particular region of the world, you're going to make friends much easier, even if you don't know the language. All you have to know is the language of tea. Do you agree? Let's make some guanja milk oolong. And we're going to use a large tea ball for that. A scoop. Two. Look, just look how, this is what this tea looks like before steeping. And I will show you what the leaves look like after steeping. Just really interesting. Okay. Get another glass. Flowers and go. So this was our glass tea. I hope you can see everything because I don't see the view i don't have the view but um no complaints i'm assuming everything is okay um milk oolong is a, as the name indicates oolong tea so the steeping is similar to uh, white tea hundred ninety degrees and um three minutes Go. 
there's a very easy way of cooling water. For example, if you're in a hurry, you don't have time for water to cool down. Uh, what I do is um, I use a um, measuring, like a glass measuring cup, or you can just use another mug. And um, you just pour uh, piping hot water into this mug or cup, measuring cup, and then you pour it out into another mug. And believe it or not, this water actually very nicely cools down to somewhere between 180 and 190 degrees because the cup usually has a temper room temperature of just 70 degrees. So by this um, pouring in and then out, we cool water very nicely to about 180, 190 degrees. Uh, there is, uh, let me make another tea using a special gadget called, this one is called Magic 2, but they basically are <clears throat> strainer type tea makers. And uh, what I like about them is that you can use very fine tea leaf and it actually will hold each one of them. Not, there will be no leaves in the cup. So we um, place, let's make rooibos in it. Uh, I'm using uh, caramel rooibos because it's delicious. Rooibos is very healthy too because it also has a very high amount of, a large amount of antioxidant, uh, minerals, vitamins, but it does not have any caffeine. And in a cup, it kind of looks and tastes like, has a mouthfeel, like almost like black tea. So it's a great black tea substitute for people who don't want too much caffeine, no caffeine, or uh, maybe a nice bedtime. And I will just use my, sorry, I just picked up. I'm going to add two scoops because this gadget holds about 14 ounces of water. And rooibos will be steeped with hot water for about six minutes. Uh, these are the rules for steeping um, rooibos and tea dance. It's a uh, Oops. This was the oolong. And I promise I will share what this looks like in a moment. Uh, rooibos we steep for in the hot water just like black tea and we keep the steam it for about six minutes the same as tisans tisans are those caffeine free herbs it's a little too big here we go stir it or eventually leaves are gonna drop um, anyway so this will be our strainer tea maker and I'm going to set up timer for six minutes and actually we could start making also our fruit tea which is not a tea it's a blend of fruits so it's a fruit infusion called less mango in Paris It's called Last Mango in Paris, so you may guess that the, it has a nice mango flavor, no caffeine. And the same rule as with rooibos, which is also herb, um, hot water 212 and 6 minutes or longer because those teas don't oversteep. Oh, I have all these aromas here. They're kind of, that's what's nice about hot tea. Uh, there is a lot of vo uh, volatile um, aromatics that you would normally don't, you wouldn't perceive unless they, they come out in the form of steam. So you can have delicious iced tea, of course, and it's going to have a nice taste, um, some smell, but um, 
hot tea has much more intense aroma because of those aromas coming up with the steam. Jessica Sackling, rooibos by definition isn't really a tea. That's right, it's not, uh, because it does not come. Great, great job. Thank you for understanding, Jessica. Maybe I should remind about our giveaway today because I don't know, I don't see too many people wanting this tea. So in order to uh, receive a nice sample of Queen Mother tea uh, with, um, it's a black tea, apple pieces, linden, mallow petals, cornflower petals, rose petals, and um, natural flavors. Uh, you have to type in comments, words, tea please, and I will send it to you. You will be receiving a free sample of um, mother, queen mother tea. And then um, just, um, you have to email to 100teacups at gmail.com. Now this offer is only valid during the live presentation. Once the show is over, uh, we won't be doing this. So hurry up. This. this. Not enough room. Uh, so this tea still has about three minutes to steep. In the meantime, I'm going to make this um, fruit tea called Last Mango in Paris. I'm actually going to make iced tea. I need some ice. <laughs> I will be using it. I, I will show you how easy it is to make iced tea. Is that okay? I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can. So. You can make iced tea in a hot brew method or cold brew. Cold brew, very easy. You just measure tea like I just did. And uh, instead of hot water, you use cold water. And you, But you extend the steeping time. It's uh, someone is breaking ice in the back. Big noise. Okay. The, the, so to make... Um, the other method, very quick method to make delicious iced tea, uh, you use half of the water per amount of tea. So uh, let's do this. You can use a strainer like this, but it has to be a deeper strainer. So um, not the English strainer that, like the one I was using. Don't use strainer like this to steep tea. This is just a strain tea. Use, you can use strainer basket like this, which is a little deeper, and you can actually place more tea in it. But this is not going to work because I'll show you why. So we're going to use another of my magic tea infuser deep baskets because we're only going to use half of the water. We're going to fill this up with halfway. Two teaspoons. And because it's a tisane, fruit, herbal, we can use hot, hot water. And we only fill it up halfway. And you can, you just have to follow this uh, uh, ratio uh, with any type of um, cup or pitcher, make sure the pitcher is heat proof. Uh, and just use pro like two teaspoons per mug or one teaspoon per cup ratio and half of the water. So I'm only filling it up halfway. This beautiful purple color is from hibiscus that's in this tea. And this one is done. I'm gonna set the timer for six minutes. And I'm going to show you how to make this. 
all you have to do is set it up like that and it strains through and it's wonderful because there's no tea particles in it I mean there's maybe one or two but they're very tiny uh, so this is a great way to make tea as well so here's the tray so this is rooibos. You see the color? It's almost the same as the color of black tea. So it tastes different than black tea, but it's a very satisfying cup. Because of that mouthfeel. It's a full tasting herb. It tastes almost like regular black tea. And this will be, we have about four and a half minutes to steep last mango in Paris, which I'm going to steep to be iced tea. And um, there's one more tea. There's many, there's quite a few other types of tea, like yellow tea, purple tea, puer tea, which is aged tea, but I'm not going in detail. It's tea 101 class. So I just want to go over basic types of tea today and kind of give you an idea how to make a good cup of tea. Uh, I know a lot of people um, make mistakes with that and unfortunately they get discouraged from drinking more teas. I'm hoping that after this presentation, not only moms, but um, other members of family, anybody who's watching it uh, will um, use this knowledge to make a really, really, really good cup of tea. <sighs> yeah, thanks, Denise. Yeah, smelling freshly brewed leaves is such a pleasure. It's aromatherapy. This, I already tasted black tea. Um, let's taste green tea. If you have a cup, if you manage to make a cup while you are watching, let's do it. So green tea never, ever should taste like black tea. Please don't steep it long. Um, don't wait for that dark color to come. This is perfect. This is, um, has like a meadowy, um, fresh plant notes, leafy, but not grassy. There's um, kind of like honeysuckle notes. And if you really tune yourself into tasting, and proper tasting is you have to take a sip. I mean, you don't have to, but it's recommended to take a sip, uh, swallow, and then exhale with your mouth closed. And then don't forget to inhale the aroma, especially with those lighter tasting teas. So. There's echo. There's like a, a finish, they call it. So that's additional olfactory experience that we get in the back of our mouth, uh, going up to, to our the back of the nose. Uh, this was green tea, a lot of antioxidants I just gave myself. Uh, let's try white tea, paimutan. It's also very light in color. White tea has more floral notes. Um, I don't know if you guys can detect them. And it's milder, sweeter tasting. But when you, when you drink um, green, white teas or lighter oolongs, you have to um, prepare yourself that they're not going to taste like regular black tea you have it's sort of like white wines versus uh, red wine like much lighter body much lighter taste but um, nevertheless uh, very um, there's a lot of, there, there could be a big array a big um, um, rainbow of flavors in it it's very good uh, some people cannot taste white tea, but if you uh, practice, 
Um, and if you know what nodes to look for, you actually will start detecting them and you're going to enjoy it. This is Milkulo, Guangzhou Milkulo. Guangzhou is the name of the area where it comes from in China. And this is a lighter oolong, so as you see, it almost looks like white or green tea in the cup. Ah, oh, peaches. <laughs> I taste peaches, um, honeysuckle. Uh, not so much milk, because a lot of people say, well, is there going to be a milk in that tea now? It's just very creamy, so... It has a very long flowery finish. I love it. And I can get probably two more steeps from that tea, from the leaves. And I, I want to show. Uh, so steeping of the last mango in Paris is finished. But I will leave it for a little longer. It's okay. These um, fruit blends or herbs, they don't um, tend to oversteep. So there's no worry about that. I just really would like to show you what uh, milk oolong leaves look like. I just have to get the saucer. They become really big. Look at this. Oops, I just ripped it, but just, I don't know if you can see the edge of the table. But this is a leaf, these are like rolled leaves before steeping. And this is how uh, there's bigger, bigger um, leaves or bigger pieces and there's some small, but look at the size of this leaf. No wonder you need a large infuser because those leaves need room to unfurl, to open up. Okay, iced tea. Um, ice is here, and I'm going to use a mug of the, about the same size, fill it up with ice. I, I don't need this, thank you. <laughs> Needs to go in the freezer. And all you have to do is just pour over ice. Voila, we have a little bit left. So you have a marvelous iced tea, which usually takes a few minutes to make. And I made one mug um, that would be probably enough to fill a bigger tumbler. Oh, how good it is. Oh my goodness. Super. There we go. Uh, we just received our Takeya ice tea makers. Um, those are very well designed uh, to make ice tea. And you can use that hot method, like the one I just use uh, presented or you can make cold brew so you just have to you fill this up with tea uh, hot water about halfway full and then you steep for about you know whatever minutes is recommended for depending on the type of tea. Uh, then after it's done, you remove the infuser. There's a special tray, and you fill this up with ice, and you do the flush. It's called flash chill ice tea maker, and you have nice iced tea very quickly in a few minutes. Or you can just make a cold brew. And these are very nice. They fit very nicely in the fridge, in the door. Um, there's a couple minutes left. <laughs> I just would like to um, tell you about a very, very popular type of tea. 
uh, to finish my presentation. Matcha. Matcha, matcha, matcha. Matcha is usually a green tea that's powder, that's ground, uh, ground leaf. Uh, and therefore, it looks like this. Which I'm sure a lot of you already know. This is matcha. Uh, matcha is very concentrated. Um, and it doesn't steep like regular tea. Um, to make matcha, you need a matcha bowl, which I have here somewhere. And matcha whisk. Oh, everything is here. I'm going to use this bowl, matcha bowl. Special bamboo whisk. Can I have a frother to show the frother? Fro electric. And stuff. And um, you use very little. You use about half a teaspoon of matcha because it's uh, very concentrated. And we use water like for green tea, which is 180 degrees. Not too much, just about maybe two, three ounces. And then we'll whisk it just like that. And this is making a froth um, suspension. So you will ingest everything, um, the infusion, and also leaf itself. That's why it's so good for you. And this is how they make tea in the Japanese tea ceremony. There we go. You can also use electric frother. Very easy to make. There we go. You can make matcha. You can froth milk, combine with matcha. There we go. And there's, you can add matcha to smoothies, to yogurt, to ice cream. You can make cookies, bake cookies with matcha. So matcha is sort of like a tea espresso because it's a very, very concentrated form of tea. Um, there's some very, very easy way to make matcha. You can literally just add it to water. This is, I'm using matcha scoop, which is about quarter teaspoon. So, like I said, the average amount is about half a teaspoon. Close it. Close it well. And shake it. Shake it. That's it. Your matcha is ready. Cold matcha. Very nice morning drink. It's uh, A lot of people like to use matcha instead of coffee because... Tea is caffeinated, and since matcha is a more concentrated form of tea, it's, like I said, sort of like drinking tea espresso. It will, um, eventually, the particles might settle at the bottom. So, basically, every time you just pick it up, shake it, and drink. It's super good. You can add sweetener. You can add honey. Uh, you can just, a lot of times, like in Japanese tea ceremony, they will be consuming like a little sweet dessert along with matcha. It's matcha is bitter, but a lot of people love this taste because it's so intense. Cold matcha actually is not bitter. That's another thing about cold brew. Uh, making cold brew tea, it kind of mellows it out. Let's see what Jessica does. Cold brewing make a more mild tea since it doesn't allow the leaves or but. Uh, Jessica, the leaves will open. They're just going to take longer. But um, 
the speed of release of the various components uh, uh, prevents the tea from getting uh, abundance of the components that might cause it to be bitter. And um, there's a lot more to it. I don't want to like uh, elaborate right now because it will take me another half an hour. But cold brewing, it changes the release of the ingredients from tea leaf in a way that those harsh ingredients are not released quickly um, because there's no hot temperature or they're not released in the amount that they would be in the hot water. But please drink hot tea. Hot tea is wonderful, healthy, and believe it or not, but um, it was um, found that actually on the hot weather, hot tea actually cools you better. And the reason for that is that um, when we drink cold beverage, it sends signal to our body that it's cold and the body is um, increasing thermogenesis, which basically is the response of body to a cold temperature. So we're heating up ourselves. Now, when you drink hot beverage, hot cup of tea, uh, there's a signal sent to our body that it's uh, hot, so the body cools off. Uh, that's why they probably, that's why, I don't know if anybody traveled to Morocco, but in Morocco they drink and in uh, Middle Eastern countries, they drink hot tea. It's usually uh, Moroccan mint, um, a delicious tea too. Okay, um, I hope everyone learned something today and I hope I made you feel special. And uh, once again, happy Mother's Day. Make every day happy Mother's Day with tea. Because tea is not only healthy, but it's a great way to relax. And I'll be here for a few more moments in case anybody has questions. And if you have any other questions, uh, just um, email me to uh, 100teacups at gmail.com. I had it somewhere here. I think I already showed it enough times. You can also go on the website. Uh, bluemonkeytea.com check out our assortment of teas and teaware um, or stop in if you're in Pittsburgh or if you travel to Pittsburgh maybe this summer uh, please stop by in our shop thank you Jessica I'm sorry I'm not following on Instagram something happened here and maybe we went over time I hope not. <laughs> okay. To all moms. This was my favorite, actually. Finger sandwiches. You don't need plate for them. <laughs>